Okay, so um, <laughs> thanks for taking us out of that deep water. You're welcome. Andrew, um, Dude, how so, deep was it? Sort of body type preference <laughs> yeah. and, and safety. And, yeah. I'm, and by safety, I mean two different things, right? Yeah. I mean... Safety for the woman. Like. Safe, and, and listen, and for the man. Some yep. Listen, there's a, there's a really interesting literature about this. If you, if you look at sort of who people select to have sex with versus who people select to try and form long-term relationships with them, I mean, there are many men who would not choose to be with the woman that is most attractive to everybody because they don't have the confidence they could keep her. That's, that's right? a good point. Even if she's not a flirt and wouldn't, and wouldn't be looking, right? Even if she didn't have a wandering eye. Some men deliberately wouldn't want to be with the most beautiful. People uh -huh. tend to match up pretty closely in terms of attractiveness. Pretty closely. Uh -huh. Pretty closely. Not, not always. It's yeah. not because the and pretty ones there, are airheads. But you asked about income. And I want to make sure that, because I had David Buss on my podcast, and he's really the expert on this. So um, we're going to have to fact check this with him. Yeah. Um, but... Yes, it's true that resource potential is an important variable because people have to think about safety and childcare and a number of things. It's but of course, the but women work life. too, right? Women can work too, right? They can opt to work and make money. But more often than, more important than any other feature across all cultures is that the woman reports that she sought someone who is kind to them. Not necessarily kind to everybody, but, but kind, kind to them, to them mm. right? Kind to them. Okay, so even if you think of like extreme money, right? Extreme money, or you think of extreme bodies or extreme resources, right? That somebody has. Women, in terms of who they tend to pair up with long-term, assuming heterosexual, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're heterosexual, because here we're making a bunch of assumptions. But in that, in that mold, what is shown up over and over again in the data is that their top priority is that someone be kind to them. Mm. In other words, they're not interested in being with someone who's really wealthy, who treats them like garbage. Is that and also- And I think this gets lost because people think, oh, it's all about money. It's not all about money. Okay. It's, about, it's about safety and kindness because you're talking about a long-term bond. Right. Yeah. Now that, then people say, well, what about this notion of gold diggers? And by the way, there are male and female gold diggers. There are, I mean, I had friends in college who, who, who would say things Ux. like they wanted to marry a really wealthy woman. I was like, really? That's I just heard this from a few people. I was like, wow, you're thinking about that as your primary concern? They're like, no, but it would be great. I would hear people say that. Mm -hmm. um, you, they're also the female to male version of that. Mm -hmm. it's, very, it's actually pretty rare, yeah. right? It's about safety and resources. And this also varies by culture, whether or not women tend to work or not work. But overall, again, I don't, you know, I don't mean to, you know, be a dead horse with this, but it's really that kindness towards them is critical, but not necessarily kindness to everybody. Is that tied to reproductive success also? And that like, if he's kind to me, he'll be kind to my kids and they have a better chance of surviving? I, I, yeah, we're, we're doing a bit of a just so story there. Like we, I don't know exactly what the experiment that. would look like and it, I'm sure the experiment's been done, but I have to assume yes, mm -hmm. right? Because the last thing you want is someone with a ton of reproductive potential, resource potential, yeah. who's going to treat you like garbage, chances are they're not going to stay with you. Yeah. Or you're going to be there, but then they're going to have a, they're going to bring in other mates. Yeah. You know, and so and when you look at the roots of jealousy and, and concerns about infidelity, or you look at the roots of sort of like concerns about resource potential and all that, it all kind of makes sense in this very old fashioned model. It also makes sense in, in the model that we live in now, the kindness toward each other is fundamentally the most important variable, mm -hmm. mm. which is kind of reassuring. I don't say that to be politically correct. That's how the data fall out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that never gets discussed because it's not as edgy as thinking like, oh yeah, it's all about money. It's all about beauty. It's all about this. It's, it's about the Lamborghini. It's like, no, like how is, it, how is he going to treat you? And yeah. so there's also something very special to people about the other person who is very desired by a lot of people, treating them particularly nicely. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, I mean, the, you hear this notion of being picked, right? Yeah. And there's mutual picking. And everything is changing now too, right? I mean, the way that, that you know, there's da there are apps like Bumble where women actually have to say, that it's yes, I will talk to you, right? Yeah. It's not a bi-directional conversation. There's an asymmetric conversation. Yeah. So again, not on the apps, but I'm fascinated by this because it's human dating behavior, but it's always going to be through the filter of biology. Well, maybe you can answer this because you're a neuroscientist. So can the brain outpace evolution where we have millions of years of evolution that men say, I'm attracted to these proportions that will nourish my kids the best. And women say, I'm attracted to these features that say he'll take care of my kids. Now society's changing in the last 70 years, crazy rate of change. All this is is fuck is like getting changed up. Can your brain outpace your evolution 
which has been hardwired for millions of years and say, you know what? I don't care about all these things. Um, well, people can make, so we have this real estate in our brain right behind our forehead um, called the prefrontal cortex, and it's your rule setting machine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you can create new rules for what's going to drive your behavior. Like we can decide that what's important in a given set of situations is blank. You actually see this, right? If people go away on retreats or they go to some event and there's only, you know, let's say, again, we're assuming heterosexual relationships here, 10 men and 10 women, they're all heterosexual, mm -hmm. you know, who you find most attractive will be gauged against the other nine, right? Mm -hmm. right? The, and so, but in a world in New York City, right? Yeah. Then the mean is that the distribution is much broader and the mean is shifted perhaps, right? And so you can, you can't beat evolution. You're always going to be constrained by brain wiring, but you can condition certain things. And also sometimes people are selecting for somebody who's really nice, really funny. We get along so well. I mean, there are other criteria, right? I'm just trying to get you to say it's okay for us to be shallow, really, at the end of the <laughs> I mean, day. It's, it's as okay Basically. to be shallow as being shallow is as important to you, right? There are people who um, are like, they have their list, right? They're like, I want to be with someone who graduated college, or I don't care, or I want to be with somebody who, you know, is physically attracted to, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, the reality is that no matter how attractive two people are to one another, like at some point it becomes familiar, mm -hmm. but there are certain people like I would put, I'll just disclosure. I'm actually become in a re relationship, monogamous relationship, I actually become more attracted to the person I'm with. And I think it's something through the nose. It's like a pheromone thing. Yeah, I become very conditioned to them, right? It's not that no one else becomes attracted to me, but I become very conditioned to them. Mm -hmm. And so I don't know that everyone's like that. I've only been me, but I know that there are some people that get really restless after they've been with the same person for a little mm. while. And sometimes that's psychological, like they never got it out of their system. They married the first person they were with. And other times it could be physiological, you know? Both of them. So, so <laughs> there's a lot of range on these. I mean, what, the biology constrains it, to answer your question. It constrains yeah. it, it sets some outer bounds on this. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't think, for instance, that we can become attracted to like tree frogs, for instance just because we decide that they're the only option Have you left. been to India? <laughs> uh, That's I, true. I have not. No, they did. They had they, uh, they have 14 dudes that raped the lizard. You didn't hear about this? I was trying to make a little joke here. and <laughs> But no, for real. Be they're, doing another study. In this is a weeks. joke on the No, this is right? not a joke. There okay. are these, these guys that gang raped a lizard. And then ate it afterward. How big was this lizard? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. <laughs> Dude, That's, <laughs> That's interesting.